Uh, I saw him do a 15-minute uh, showcase at Arts Market in High Point back in November and was completely knocked out by this artist. Uh, many folks will have seen him on PBS where he has actually done uh, a program uh, on Groucho Marx. Um, not only is he a very good impersonator, um, his program is the only program that is actually sanctioned and approved by the Groucho Marx estate. That is wild. Now, uh, that, uh, that is a lot to be commended by, as seen on PBS. Now, what does it mean by a two-act, 90-minute comedy series? Is, are there going to be two different acts that night? Yeah. Uh, what he'll do is come out and do about a 45-minute set and then take a, about a 15-minute intermission and then come out and do uh, roughly another 45-minute set. So um, there will be an intermission in that program, and um, he's going to do the best of the one-liners, uh, the anecdotes, the songs that uh, folks will remember from the Groucho Marx uh, programming. And... Um, with his ragtime piano player, he'll also do the best of the songs uh, that Groucho used to sing, from Lydia, oh Lydia, uh, you know, to all of the other ones. So it's, it's a wonderful program. And he will have a piano player here. Absolutely. Okay. Add a little bit more to it. That's going to be interesting. Thursday, February the 22nd. Um, Thursday, March the 8th, you have a, uh, am I looking at this? Is this Pablo? Pablo, that's correct. Pablo. Well, Pablo is a fantastic guitarist, and he's doing a very unique style of music. Um, there are not many artists out there that can say they perform Mediterranean music. Um, Pablo is a, a Canadian citizen of Greek descent, and what he does is combines elements of flamenco and Latin jazz with the Greek bouzouki and a lot of the uh, Mediterranean sounds that you would hear in, in uh, Greece and Crete and uh, uh, Sicily. And uh, it's a wonderful program. He actually gets uh, uh, folks from the audience to come up on stage and dance with him. Uh, it's a, a very danceable program. And um, if anyone can come and see Pavlo and not move their feet and stand up and snap their fingers and clap their hands, I will be very, very surprised. I was able to see a, a showcase of his, uh, again, at Arts Market back in November, uh, 15 minutes, and knew uh, within the first five minutes that I wanted to book him. Uh, a fantastic performer. We have Fadasia. When it gets up going, it's got a Greek. It's called a Hasaposevico in Greek. It's just a two-four, no tumpa, 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 you know. I always sort of pride myself first and foremost as a songwriter, you know. Um, it just happens that I love to perform. I'm primarily an instrumental recording artist, you know, and, uh, but on the third album, for the first time, I sang and wrote a song with vocals. Is that uh, what flamenco and Latin jazz, is that what Mediterranean music is? Well, flamenco actually has its roots in Spain. Uh, Latin jazz will have its roots in Latin America. Um, but it all is uh, basically music that's performed on the classical guitar along with uh, Latin percussion instruments from castanets to uh, congas to bongos, timbales, uh, those types of things, salsa rhythms, um, meringue rhythms, those sorts of things. And what Pavlo does is actually takes elements of uh, flamenco and combines it with elements from Mediterranean music. And they actually use a, an instrument called the Greek bouzouki, uh, which is a guitar-like instrument, uh, doubled strings, and it actually looks like a very large gourd. Uh, it's it's got a, a really interesting sound to it, and when it's paired with the classical guitar and they start to play harmonies, it's phenomenal uh, what these fellows can do. Now, are you learning uh, uh, all this music and exposure you're getting here? Is this is this broadening your horizons on all these instruments, or, or, or are you already well versed in this? Well, um, I do have a degree in music. I, I studied music at East Carolina University, and. Um, 
uh, have not been in the presenting business for uh, too long now, uh, about two years, uh, starting with the B.B. King show that we had here, which was our kickoff and grand opening of this uh, facility. But uh, I am uh, learning all the time, particularly by uh, exposing myself to new artists and going to events like Arts Market, uh, performing Arts Exchange, etc., uh, finding uh, artists that I think will work uh, for an Edgecombe County artist or, or audience, or artists that I think uh, I have a responsibility to expose the Edgecombe County audience to. You've certainly done that because you've got a wide variety of entertainment, uh, everything from uh, every spectrum of the rainbow uh, that will be performing here. There's no absolutely no excuse for anyone in Edgecombe County or the surrounding areas to sit home and be bored uh, this fall. You've got something for them to do. I totally agree with you about the only thing that you won't find uh, in the performance series will be beach music and country music. And the reason for that is that the market is so saturated already. with beach music and country music already. I don't want to be redundant. I want to give people an opportunity to come out, see something that they've never seen before, but that they might really enjoy. You've certainly done that. Uh, an outstanding job of putting all this together. Now, on this entertainment, or I'm just I'm fascinated to know, did you single-handedly, or do you have a a, a team of? 20 scientists back there that's, that help you put this package together. Tell me who, who puts all the entertainment together. No scientists were involved. I can, I can tell you that. Um, I have attended several conferences uh, where I've been able to uh, see showcases by different performing artists. Um, I also work with the North Carolina Presenters Consortium. We are a member of the Presenters Consortium. This is a nonprofit organization that's statewide. Uh, there are about um, somewhere between 80 and 100 presenters in, of the performing arts in our state. And what we do is network with each other. Um, we hold conferences and attend conferences together to uh, expose ourselves to new artists. And we also do some block booking, uh, which really helps bring the price down for all of us. Uh, for example, if, if um, I'm interested in a particular artist and someone in the uh, Piedmont is interested and someone in the mountains is interested and we can set up a block of dates for that artist, uh, it's going to bring the price down for all of us so it makes it more affordable for us. Um, I also have an advisory committee uh, with ten members. Um, representatives of the Edgecombe County Arts Council, Edgecombe Community College, the Edgecombe County Schools, and the community at large uh, who get together. Once I've put together a list of artists to consider, uh, they take a look at all the press materials, uh, video, audio samples that we might have, and uh, help me select um, a proposed slate of artists, which is then approved by the Edgecombe County um, Cultural Arts Council's Board of Directors and the Edgecombe Community College Board of Trustees. So there has absolutely been a lot of work, and you, I'm assuming you've been working since last year just to bring all this talent together this year. Yeah, we generally start looking, in fact, I'm, I'm already looking at artists for the 2007-2008 performance series. Uh, we will take a look at those in January, review them. I usually don't set up a show in January because the weather can be kind of volatile and I need some time uh, to get my committee together to take a look at these things and come up with a proposed slate of artists. Um, so I'm a staff of one, but I have uh, a team of folks who help me, uh, and that's what makes all of this possible. Well, you've certainly done an outstanding job pulling all this together. And up next, uh, Eric, we've got Bill Leslie and uh, looks like Lorica, or correct me there. Bill Leslie and Lorica, actually. Mm -hmm. Saturday, March the 17th at 8 p.m. Um, this is a perfectly appropriate show for St. Patrick's Day. Um, Bill Leslie, um, many people will recognize as a news anchor for WRAL TV5 in Raleigh. He's also a talented guitar player, singer, and Irish whistle player. And he has a group of musicians that he performs contemporary Celtic music with. So this will be very appropriate for St. Patrick's Day, and I think we were very lucky to get him on St. Patrick's Day. Absolutely. Now, uh, how long has he been in, uh, how long has Bill been in the performance business? Bill's been performing for an awful long time, um, but I think he really started to take himself seriously about five or six years ago, uh, produced his first CD, uh, constructed a studio in his home.